Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Marie O'Neill, and I am an evolutionary astrologer. My training came through the Stephen Forrest Apprenticeship Program. So Stephen Forrest is my mentor for evolutionary astrology. I am currently living in Santa Rosa, California, where I am an astrologer, life coach, and past life regressionist. I've also just published my brand new book, uh, which is my first book, actually, which is a memoir called And the Lotus Opened. Thank you for coming to this particular EA Zoom talk. Today, what I'm going to talk about is the nodal axis. In particular, I'm talking about the signs of the nodes. That's all we're focusing on today are the signs of the nodes. And because we have an hour together today, I'm going to talk about Aries through Virgo. The next talk that I give will be for the rest of the signs. Talking about the nodal story or the nodal axis is, can be very detailed, well, it is very detailed and it's, there's so much information for you to integrate that it, it's important to take it slow which is also one of the reasons that I'm focusing on the signs first. What I'm going to do now is, well, in a few minutes is share my screen with you so that I can show you how the nodes are actually formed. What are they? Where do they come from? And that sort of thing. But before I do that, let's talk about, um, of course, what they are, where, where they do come from. They're basically, they originate from our psychological makeup. And uh, we, they are, or at least the Southern node represents unresolved experiences that we have. There are memories, our emotions. And what I like to tell people when I'm describing especially that Southern node, uh, when I'm talking to them about their nodal story, is you don't have to believe in reincarnation to believe in the nodes. You can look at this as your biological karma, as what you inherited from your ancestry. For example, maybe your parents have green eyes. Um, uh, that is something you inherited from your ancestors. You could have a trait, for example, that you inherited from your ancestors too. In evolutionary astrology, we do, however, if it's wonderful if you believe in reincarnation because most evolutionary astrologers do believe in reincarnation. When we look at our chart as a whole, yes, we might have Pluto in a particular place. We might have the ascendant in a certain sign or Saturn in a certain sign in a certain house. And we, we describe the placements of these planets in these signs, and that's all wonderful. The question that we ask in evolutionary astrology is why? Why do we have the particular chart that we have? And the reason we have it is because we've developed certain traits, certain skills. We have certain issues that we need to work on that we brought in from prior lives. All of that is in the chart. When we're looking at the nodes, the nodes are going to tell us specifically, well, it's going to tell us our nodal story. And the nodal story doesn't have to be literal. What we're looking for is the feeling. We're looking for the, um, to, to generate what the energy that you were working with in a prior life. 
And we're, because that is going to help you to know why you have a particular chart. Now, when you're working with your nodes, of course, we have a southern node and a northern node. The southern node is the prior life personality, and the northern node is basically the remedy. It's how to resolve or help resolve that southern node. Before I go into more detail about that, which I will in a few minutes, I want to um, I want to describe to you how we get the node, how the nodes are derived. And I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me see if I can share my screen because I want, here we go. Let's see, making sure that I can share my screen, good. So can you see my screen? I guess you can see my screen there. Good, yes. good, wonderful, thank you. Let me just, okay. Maybe I need to do this in a slideshow so that it is, Okay, good. Now, let's look at this. This is the astronomy. And I know that that is challenging for so many um, because we just, you know, it's interesting because astrology and astronomy used to be connected and now they're separated. So as astrologers, a lot of times we don't look at the sky as much as we should look at the sky to see how uh, where the planets are and the placement and all that. But I wanted to explain how the nodes are derived. And remember, the nodes are not, they're not planets, they're not signs, they're not asteroids, they are points in the sky. So let's look at this. This is the sun, and this is the earth. This is where we are. And the earth, as you can see, is going around the sun, just like Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn, all of the planets, the earth is going around the sun. And we know it takes 365 days for the um, earth to get all the way around the sun and back to its current position. Now, as the earth is going around the sun, we also have the moon here, this little white ball or sphere here is going around the earth. And if you are, because we are standing on earth and we're looking out at the sky, we have two, we're looking at, I like to look at this as like a sheet of glass. It's a, it's, this is the ecliptic and this is the uh, ecliptic uh, going around the sun. And then we have another ecliptic here, which is the plane of the earth. So where these, where the plane of the earth, the ecliptic of the plane of, I'm sorry, the plane of the, the moon meet the plane of the, uh, ecliptic, we have the nodes, we have a point. It's a, an axis point, it's an intersection. And what we found is that these points have energy. Now this is the Northern node, which looks like uh, uh, the hairstyle of a female from the fifties and sixties. If you can remember back then, that's the way I look at it. But um, of course, in Chinese um, astrology, we're looking at um, uh, the, the dragon, the head of the dragon or the tail of the dragon. But there's a whole story around that, which I won't go into. But anyway, the, uh, when we're looking at the 
northern node here, you can see that the nodes are going, the, the orbits of the moon is going down. And then here it's going up. So this is the southern node. So we have the descending and the ascending nodes. And now the, the other thing is the moon is on a tilt. It's not orbiting the earth, you know, just in a round circle. Well, it is in a round circle, but it's, it's on a tilt um, in relation to um, the ecliptic. So you've got about a five degree tilt and that's why you have, uh, you know, the note, you have the descending and ascending nodes. So now that you have that, I am going to stop sharing my screen here. And good. So, now that you see that, um, we can move on. So with the, um, we talked about the sign and basically the sign describes the personality that the person had in a prior life. It's an energy. Um, it was his um, evolutionary agenda at the time. So when he when he when that person is here in this lifetime, they've got that southern node and we have to look at it a little bit negatively because there are gifts in that southern node. There are traits and attributes that the person has that are positive that they want to keep. And there's also parts of the parts um, or attributes that they need to heal. And it could be that some, they got something wrong in a prior lifetime or um, where maybe there was no punishment for whatever it was they got wrong, but their actions had consequences. Um, it could have been something that the person got right in a prior lifetime, but getting it right meant that you suffered uh, emotional trauma. Maybe you had to save someone from a burning building or you had to make a choice between who lives or dies. Uh, these are things that um, if you can still get situations where you make a decision, make the right decision, but you still suffer from it. Or sometimes, it's not really a question of right or wrong. Maybe it is, um, maybe something happened that was of no fault of your own. Maybe there was famine or for example, we had, or there was the potato famine that happened in Ireland. All of those people suffered and it was really of no fault of, of their own. Or here in America, when we had the displacement of um, people due, due to the Dust Bowl, um, where we had famine in, in, or where people couldn't plant their crops because the topsoil was um, going away. There are plenty of instances where things are just out of your control and you have to just deal with it. And of course, then there's the other, um, uh, the other thing that can happen is, you know, people can just do horrible things to you. And there is, you know, for example, think about what happened with Auschwitz and people who had to deal with um, that genocide. That's something that we, um, that could certainly cause a south node that, uh, you know, particular south node that needs to be healed. That particular south node would probably be a scorpionic south node though, because of such trauma. So basically, once again, where the moon crosses the ecliptic, 
heading north is uh, the North Node. And where it crosses heading south is the South Node of the Moon. So basically, when the plane of the Moon's orbit rises above the plane of the ecliptic, that's the North Node. And when it goes down, that's the Southern Node. And know that with the moon, you know, the moon is constantly moving. It um, moves through a sign at every two and a half days, but the nodes themselves are going backwards um, in the sky. And it takes them about a year and a half to go through each sign. Now that we have the astronomy taken care of, let's move into the signs and what they mean when you have the southern node in a particular sign and the northern node in a particular sign. What I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, go from Aries to Virgo. And I'll talk about, you know, I'll give you some of the traits, the attributes of Aries in general, but then I'll talk about what it means to have the Southern node in Aries. And what does it mean to have the Northern node in Aries, which, um, and now to start off, when we are working with these nodes, you know, you want to of course start off looking at the Southern node and figuring out what the personality was, you need to look at the aspects to the nodes, the house that it's in, the ruler, and there's a um, bunch of steps to looking at that southern node to come up with the nodal story. And all of that is fine. The northern node is, even though it's the remedy to the southern node, the northern node is dormant in the chart until we actively start working with it. And I like to tell my clients that when, you're, when you want to consciously work on the issues of the Southern Node, when you have a situation arise, take a look at that Northern Node and the attributes of the Northern Node and see if you can't, even though it's going to, it's unfamiliar, and uncomfortable, see if you can't make your decision or your choice based on the North Node position versus the Southern Node position. Now, typically, and this is true, to get to Node issues, which you know we'll talk about in another talk, to give you just a little taste of that, you would look at the aspects to that Southern node and work those aspects uh, to other, uh, you know, to other signs, other planets and houses. And working that builds, your, it heals that Southern node and it helps to push you towards the Northern node but with that Northern node, you can certainly uh, start working with it at any time. You will know, however, if you are healing that Southern node because you will find yourself in some ways naturally being pushed towards that Northern node. Although you still have to consciously uh, make a decision that you're going to um, work with that Northern node. So Aries, let's look at that. When you have, let's look at Aries, uh, its initial, well, its attributes. So what is it about? This is about claiming your right to be here, to be alive, to be on earth. This is your God-given right, and it's about claiming that right. It's competitive. It can be uh, heroic. Um, you, Aries feels that they, that they have the right to use force if necessary. So what happens when you have 
the southern node in Aries, which is where you came from in a prior life. So this could be, this can come out as cruelty, as rage, um, ins insensitivity. Um, you would, if you have an Aries south node, excuse me, pay attention to this. Where are you insensitive? Uh, where is the anger, uh, the destructiveness? Because Aries south node uh, can come, um, can certainly be destructive. Uh, they can also, um, it's interesting because the Aries south node, the person can also be the victim because they haven't developed courage, which you would think, um, now that wouldn't be the case, but sometimes it is. It all depends on the all of the other signatures in the chart. The person can also be very aggressive and very domineering if they have a southern node in Aries. And you think about prior life, what would cause a person to come back with the south node in Aries? You know, there's all sorts of scenarios that you can, I'm sure you can think of. Now, that's the southern node. If you have a north node in Aries, then that means that your southern node is in Libra. So that's the counter uh, balance to Libra, that Aries north node. And here, what you, you know, when you think about Libra, you're looking at codependency a lot of times. But and so with Aries as that North Node, you're healing that codependency. Uh, you're looking to uh, have lots of adventure, um, you know, do things spontaneous. You want to, you are pioneering, you're out there doing the bungee jumping and the, um, uh, doing things uh, spur, you know, quickly and uh, just taking the initiative. Uh, you're pioneering, you're loyal, uh, you're driving towards excellence. So you can see if you, if you have that Southern node in Libra, you can actually force, you can actually a lot of times push yourself You've got to push yourself towards that Aries um, North Node. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's the Aries North Node, which is the remedy to Libra. And then the Aries South Node, uh, you are, of course, looking at fear, too. I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, that can be... Um, you want to conquer your fear, but maybe you didn't in a prior life conquer your fear. Maybe um, you died terrified and you're coming back with because you didn't take um, action when you needed to take action. Maybe that's how you ended up with an Aries uh, South Node or maybe something else happened to you. Then we move on to Taurus. I love Taurus. And what is it? What is Taurus? Taurus is in the body. It is down to earth. It's very grounded and calming. It loves beauty and, and nice things. Uh, Taurus is um, the actual material that is used to create. It's, um, it's the uh, substance. So it would be the ore, gold, the um, before it is refined in the ground. If you have a southern node in uh, Taurus, then it's highly possible that maybe you were rigid. Maybe you were just plain stubborn in a prior life and you didn't want to budge or move. Uh, could have been laziness, could have been uh, fear of change, or maybe you hoarded. Uh, hoarders sometimes have, from prior lives, sometimes have a southern node 
in Taurus. I could have been, um, maybe you had, uh, maybe the person has a loss of perspective on their physical appetites. Uh, so maybe they overeat or overindulge, no matter what it is, they could be, they could overindulge. Uh, they can also have denial um, issues because Taurus really doesn't want to confront unless it just, unless it just has to. And so that's that, um, or it could be materialism, like we, we talked about. That's the Southern node. If you have the Northern node in Taurus, that means that you came from a Scorpio South node. So you would have had a lot of trauma in a prior life if you had a Scorpio, a lot of psychological trauma too, if you had a Southern node in Scorpio. So your Northern node being the remedy, you would want to um, be able to heal any type of drama, any type of psychological drama that comes up, you want to heal it. That's why you would have the Taurus. You'd want to slow down, have things be simple. You'd want the comforts of life. Uh, maybe you'd want to be involved in the arts uh, in some way. You're basically looking for peace and stability. You want, um, you want comfort. It's like slowing down. You also want to be in the body because Taurus is all about being in the body. And when you think about it, if you had a Scorpio um, South Node, then you wouldn't, you might not be in the body because maybe you had something, like I said, horrific happened that took you out of your body. So with that uh, said, with Taurus, it's all, North Node, it's all about quieting down, having the stability, having realistic stability, um, being in the body. That's what you're looking at with the Taurus North Node. Moving on to Gemini, which I love Gemini too. Now, Gemini is a sign that is usually pretty open-minded. Um, it's curious, loves to talk, it's restless, and um, it's pretty, it's a pretty stimulating sign. It um, loves conversation, of course, and different experiences in life, having varied experiences, and Gemini uh, listening is an attribute of Gemini. doesn't have to be, but it's if, a Gemini, if, if you run into a Gemini that doesn't like to listen, that is an out of, ba out of balance Gemini. So when you're looking at the um, Southern node of Gemini, if it's the Southern node, then in a prior life, um, well, what they're dealing with is distraction. Uh, they're typically extremely distracted. Uh, they are not in the body, the um, loss of perspective. Um, they can have basically a hunger for stimulation. So never being able to not go, 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 or do, do, do. It, it's, it's the person who is always gone, always has, um, is moving on to the next thing um, and never resting. So that would be the Southern note in um, Gemini. They can also, at, because Gemini is a young, it's usually the sign of youth. So you can get a person who's 70, 80 years old still acting as though they're 15 or 20 <laughs> because it, they're just with that Southern uh, note in Gemini. It's not a bad thing necessarily. But, you know, it's not, it, it's not healed either. Or they can have endless talking with the uh, Southern node in Gemini. Now, 
if the person has a north node in Gemini, that means the southern node is in Sagittarius, which means that Gemini is going to be the antidote to that Sagittarian south node. So the Gemini north node will want to um, heal any type of rigidity that they might have of um, self-righteousness, of opinions. Uh, um, they'd want to be good listeners. They'd have the urge to learn and there'd be the openness to change. Fast, they'd be fascinated with language or multiple languages and they would notice they would notice just about everything. Their curiosity would be really heightened and they would be non-judgmental. That is the Northern node in Gemini. Now, when we move on to Cancer, Cancer of course is, um, it's considered the mother because it's uh, ruler of course is the moon which is very nurturing and it's usually more inward than outward very sensitive um, they're usually uh, love safety and they're quiet and love home and usually they're fine being on their own or with people that they truly care about when the south node is in cancer, you can get a person who is really dealing with a lot of fear and maybe they withdraw because remember cancer is the crab. And so it can withdraw into itself and not come out if it's afraid and fearful. They can be, uh, the person can hide behind whatever it is they're doing for a living, maybe caregiving, um, or cooking or whatever it is they're doing, they can hide behind, hide in plain sight. There can be a fear of pain or of suffering with the cancer south node. Um, sometimes the person can be defined by family, which, you know, that's not, uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but then the person hasn't individuated either if they're defined by family. They uh, sometimes want to be invisible and just not seen. The person, uh, you could be looking at dependency, which would be dependency on the family, which you know, you're know you looking at codependency or on the mate or friends or whomever. And there can also be manipulation involved uh, with that Southern node in cancer and a lot of time and cancer is also a sign that really uh, they, they their memories are very good so they can get lost in their memories and um, actually put themselves in a prison of just memories and never venturing out from that if the person has the um, North Node in Cancer, then that means that this is the antidote to Capricorn. And when I say antidote, remember the opposite sign has positive traits too and, and gifts and they're there. So that Southern Node is not all bad. It has a lot of wonderful traits that, need, that can be used and utilized and usually are. It's just that there are um, there are parts that need healing. And once those are healed, then the positive attributes can just shine. So with the Cancer uh, North Node, we're looking at, like I said, the antidote or remedy for Capricorn. And in this case, you want to, or the person needs to employ gentleness and they need to accept that people have frailties, that you know you can't be perfect, that people make mistakes. Um, with cancer, 
Uh, you can heal control issues. Um, that stoic long suffering can also be healed or uh, the depression that Capricorn a lot of times will have if it's the Southern node in Capricorn, if they're moving towards that North node, that North node in Cancer goes a long way in healing uh, depression and suffering. Uh, the uh, Cancer attribute for the North node is of course nurturing nurturing instincts, it's instinctual, uh, it, it's there, it's just that it has to be brought out. Uh, there's of course psychological depth at uh, Cancer North Node. And um, last but not least, or maybe not last, the Cancer North Node, if you can just grow things, if you can plant a garden or flowers, uh, that goes a long way also in helping to uh, work with the Capricorn uh, South Node. Now we move on to Leo. And with Leo, I love my Leo friends. They're very, they're spontaneous. They're, um, they love creativity. They're usually pretty creative and they like being seen and like being in front of an audience. If the Southern node though is in Leo, then there can be an issue with self-importance. In self-importance, there's, um, there's a fine line there. It's good to believe in yourself. Um, but when I talk about self-importance, I mean um, an overactive ego with self-importance. There is an arrogance there. Um, there can be expectations that are associated with, say, the person has a high position in, um, in society. And so they've got power and status. And so they have the expectation of... Um, and, um, you know, basically not good expectations with, uh, with that position. Uh, they can be their own press release because number one, you hear them, you can hear them coming. You can, uh, they're constantly talking about themselves. So you're looking at uh, ego inflation. Uh, that is something that needs to be worked on now. Like I said, there's positive traits there too but we're looking at these Southern nodes. Uh, we're looking at them a little bit on the negative side because of the parts that need to be healed. So with the Leo North node, that means that this is the antidote to Aquarius, which is another wonderful sign. And here, you know, with Aquarius, you can have an issue of disassociation. So the Leo North node would heal or help to heal that disassociation or that uh, alienation. And uh, you can have a person with an Aquarius South node who overly identifies with their intellect. And so the Leo North node is the remedy for that. Uh, you, it's okay to have applause. Um, it's okay to have creativity. Um, the Leo North Node would veer towards more being warm and inclusive. They would certainly, with Leo, remember Leo is ruled by the sun. So you're looking at, you know, the sun radiating its rays out and with the Leo South Node, uh, the issues that need to be resolved, you can have a person who um, they let you know that they're shining. They you they they are just in your face. There, it's all it can be all about them. That's also the sun. Everything revolves around them. They know it. They are happy with it, and the ego is just out there. With the Leo North Node, you're still shining. People still see that person. It's just that they have this quiet dignity 
when you think about a king or queen, they don't have to announce that they're the king or the queen. They are just by virtue of who they are. So they would have a quiet dignity. When you're looking at the Leonor node, this is what you are looking at, or that's what you're getting, um, you're working towards that quiet dignity. And you can weigh with all of the, you know, with the South Node and the North Node, how well you're moving towards that North Node by how you are um, responding to life, the decisions that you're making. And look at whether or not you're making decisions that are the North Node or the Southern Node. That's the easiest way to do that. So let's go on to Virgo, which is going to be the last sign that I'm going to actually talk about today. Now with Virgo, you can have, um, Virgo is all about perfection. It's always looking for perfection, even though perfection doesn't exist. Um, it knows it exists somewhere, but not in our realm. So it's uh, there, Virgos, of course, um, usually are into service. It's um, all about serving the other and self-improvement. Um, usually Virgos are not happy with the way things are. They just want to make things just a little bit better if they can, which is good. So if by chance, um, you know, if you're looking at the south node in Virgo, you can get a Virgo southern node where the person is extremely critical. Uh, they criticize everything. Nothing is ever right. And, you know, Virgo can see where things are off, but being super critical can be crippling. And they can see this not only in others, but in themselves too. So they can be very hard on themselves, um, be very picky with themselves and with others. They um, can also have the urge to put down others and not only criticize them, um, but put them down for any type you know, of inadequacy that they might have. And they may, the Virgo Southern note can be dealing with guilt and shame and, uh, you know, and need to, you know, need to heal that. If the person has a Virgo North node, uh, this is basically the remedy for that Pisces Southern node. And that Virgo North node is going to pull you towards being grounded, being in the body, being not being the, you can heal absent-mindedness of that Southern, Southern node in Pisces with the Northern node in Virgo. And um, you can also heal that need to escape because sometimes Pisces Southern node just wants to escape and not be here. There is the desire to serve, uh, this is the crafts person. Uh, they can put together, that Virgo North Node can put together systems to heal, systems to, um, to do anything. Usually they make good, um, good accountants, uh, good planners, good social planners, good conference planners. Uh, the Virgo North Node is really good with this. And they are... Um, they still do the self-appraisal, but they're careful with it. They know where to stop. They know how to stop uh, with the self-appraisal. And they know that uh, perfection is not something that um, really exists. So we have gone through, oh my goodness, I went through these a little faster than I had anticipated. Are there any questions? I don't see any. Don't see any? Okay. 
All right. So when, you know, when you're looking at the, um, the nodes of the moon and you're looking at that southern node, be sure to, you're going to look at the ruler of that southern node. For example, if you have a Virgo south node, you're going to look to Mercury. Where is Mercury? Where That's going to be the ruler. Uh, and you're going to look at the houses. Um, and we'll get into that in another time because we've just, like I said, we've just talked about half of the signs. But, you know, the signs have to be put in houses because that is another uh, aspect of the nodal story. Where in a prior life did you have this particular southern node and where in this incarnation is the remedy i mean you can have a northern node in virgo or any any sign but you've got to have a house to go along with it and what other uh, signs are aspecting that northern node or that southern node it's the story this is this is what is called uh, I know Stephen Forrest calls it the chart behind the chart. And that is exactly what this is. Each of us has a particular chart. And as I said at the beginning, at the onset, the question isn't, um, you know, you, uh, how, you know, how does Pluto operate in Virgo and who am I and all that. It's why you have that chart in the first place. And once you know your nodal story, then that will inform you as to why you have the chart that you actually have. So I like to use the chart and especially the nodes on my spiritual journey of healing. Because remember, all of us are here to evolve our consciousness. And once, if you can work on one issue that you have and heal it, and that goes a long way to helping you to increase or enhance your consciousness, that also shifts how the other planets and signs in your chart respond how you, well, not how they respond, but how you work with that energy within you. Because remember, the planets are just, there's just energy that is going on within you. So with that, um, to share my screen once again, because I want to tell you about my book that I just um, that I just published and boy was that a long journey to publishing let me see it doesn't I was trying to go forward with that and it didn't want to let's see try this one more time there we go now, let's see, here we go. So speaking of Southern Node and North Node, um, you know, I wrote my memoir uh, a couple of years ago and I finally published it this year. And the reason I'm telling you about it is because you know, my south node is in Pisces and my north node is in Virgo. And I, of course, had to work consciously to move towards my north node in Virgo. This book is full of, of actual events that I went through um, that were either Piscean, either reflected my Piscean south node or my Virgo North Node. And now I've managed to integrate both and work with both the Southern and, um, you know, the, the good attributes 
of that Piscean Southern node. Uh, so on my website, which is andthelotusopened.com, I have a book club, uh, in, which is an inspirational guide available. You're welcome to go there and download the PDF for, um, there are 30 motivational prompts or actually uh, prompts for you to work on each day for 30 days to help you work on yourself and heal yourself. So uh, be sure to look at that. So what is your node, your Southern and Northern node in there, Miss? <laughs> Missy? I'm, op I'm opposite you. <laughs> oh, are you? <laughs> yep, the South node in Virgo, North node in Pisces. And how does that work for you? Uh, I am very critical of myself and others. I've tried a lot through my life to um, let go of, you know, all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard, though. You know, I, per perfection is, is, it seems to be in my bones. I, I also have Sun and Saturn and Virgo, so... <laughs> You know, that, oh, that, that doesn't help. That doesn't <laughs> help. No, it doesn't. And, <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, I came into this world with lots of Virgo energy and I'm trying to figure out how to use it to the better good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you would look to that Pisces North node. Yeah. To help you with that. Cause you know, Pisces wants to merge. It wants to you know, it's nebulous, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, and, you know, you have to look at too, is that Pisces more a Jupiterian Pisces, or is it more of a Neptune? And that's going to inform you too, as to how to, um, how to work with it. Well, then I, then I have Jupiter and Pisces to go with it. So I'm, oh, there I'm, you go. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm learning, I, I am learning how to let go, believe me. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I, I taught let it go yoga for a while. So because I needed to learn it, <laughs> you needed to. Well, you know, and if you, you could to teach it, teaching something, you really do learn it. Yeah, absolutely. That's because why we, have, that's why we do it. That's oh, we do. oh, yeah, absolutely. And I love I, I love these nodes once I learned them and how they operate. You know, I learned how to work with them and work with them within myself so I can and I don't know if you can do this yet it's I can look at that I can have a situation arise and feel that southern node or at least the uh the energy of it and knowing okay I'm supposed uh, it's better for me to respond from the north node and it may be and it can be uncomfortable at first because you're having to build a muscle to work to, to actually do something that is with that North Node it is not easy. It's to me, it's like the hardest work you'll ever do uh, because we're programmed with that Southern Node. And that's just our default unless we change it. And it's just, it's, it's not easy, but it's our evolutionary journey, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a good background and un, uh, yeah, under, <laughs> underpinning to have, but <laughs> move, moving forward toward the North Node, exactly. Oh yeah, absolutely. So anyway, that's all that I have for today. I appreciate you inviting me to give this talk today. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing. And we look forward to the next installment of Libra through Pisces. Oh, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.